want to start with Steve Isom, who is running for um, chairman of the uh, Lexington Republican Party. And uh, I'll just let Steve tell you about himself, and uh, then we'll, we'll move on to the next part. Right, thanks, thanks um, It's been a while since I've been back to see you. Um, a lot of friendly faces out here. Uh, my name is Steve Isom. I've been in the Patriot Movement for quite some time, even before I got elected. And I am an elected official. Uh, I will tell you, it is much more difficult to be an elected official, as I'm sure Tom will tell you, and to be a patriot at the same time and go against the current. It's very difficult. Uh, but also, Taverson had this very impressive uh, mail uh, with all my background or degrees and all these types of things. He mentioned something on there. I want to bring it before I forget. Uh, the Sam Money Committee. The Sam Money Committee has made a lot of progress over the last year or so uh, on the two bills we have in the House in the Senate here in South Carolina and uh, the one that was introduced June 28th, the Sam Money Promotion Act. On that committee, we had several people, and I don't see everyone here tonight. Patricia Week was one of the key factors in making that successful. Uh, Jackie Fowler, uh, Ray Moore, Colonel Ray Moore, who happens to be here, Jackie's here. Um, we, we put a lot of time, effort into it. It wouldn't have been possible without those people being there. Uh, Ed Toler, I, Ned Toler, I don't see Ned here tonight. Ned was a key factor uh, in, in making that successful. And before I forget, Talbot, I know I'll mention this to you, and then I'll go into my spiel about why I should be elected GOP chairman. <clears throat> a lot I want to tell you, but I can only tell you one thing. I got this from Washington this afternoon. Um, Ray, this is what they said I can say to the public. Okay. You can quote me on this. There is one senator in Washington, and maybe a few more, joining him who, who, who was planning later this month on introducing two bills that make dollar exchange, exchangeable into gold and silver uh, that can be used as money. So basically, a uh, going tying the dollar back to gold again. That's what we're talking about. Huge implications. So there should be a lot of excitement in the conservative community um, for this. So look for that later this month. I wish I could tell you the rest. It's all good, but I can't. Uh, but, uh, I didn't want to run for office to begin with, even in the city of Casey. Uh, and it was because of Ron Paul I decided to run. Ultimately, I knew one day I'd be in the rocking chair or in some, maybe a bed or something, thinking back on my life, and did I do my best to keep this country free uh, so I could take chances, my friends could take chances in, in business, and you could have the freedom to choose your course in life, whether successful or not. And I saw that slipping away, and, and, and Ron Paul was one reason that I decided to run. And I was asked then to, to make, make a difference, and I was asked this time to make a difference by people in this room and by people uh, in the GOP. And let me promise this, I promise to keep to the platform of the GOP, the principles, and the emphasis is on principles, not the label of the GOP. Because you see so many people here who are elected officials who say they are Republican or a label and they don't follow the principles, which are fundamentally the principles of the Constitution. And as you know, that's what uh, Ron Paul emphasized and others are starting to emphasize now. So I would, if, if I get elected, I want to emphasize on our elected officials to stay with the party platform. And, and, and I know the response I'm hearing from longtime Republicans is, oh, we already have an election. But the standard bearer for the Republican Party is the party, and that's what we represent. And, but the thing, if, if you hear Steve Ison, think of fairness. Whether you agree or disagree with me, everyone will get to be, will be heard. Their, your opinion will be voiced and heard, agree or disagree. So that's the number one premise. That was the number one premise I had on the Amazon issue. That's why I was so adamant that everyone should be treated equally, especially in business. Um, so, but going back to my, my background, I grew up on a farm in Alabama, a place called Tuscumbia, Alabama which is the birthplace of Helen Keller, uh, worked on construction. After digging enough ditches and working, hanging steel, running a crane and bulldozers and all these things, I knew there had to be an easier way. And for some reason, I was halfway decent with chemistry and math, so my undergraduate degree is in chemistry and math. And I, but I wanted to teach. I had a great teacher, and I wanted to give back. And for a short time, I went and got a master's and a doctorate at Auburn, went to Columbia in uh, New York, got another master's. And I gave back through teaching from high school through graduate school at different, different uh, universities. And then somehow I ended up in business for myself. Um, wrote a lot of software, 
have a couple of utility patents from the United States Patent Trademark Office. Some of them are translated into Chinese for whatever reason. <laughs> And I, and I can't speak Chinese like uh, one of the presidential candidates, but I won't attempt to. Not Mandarin, anyway. Uh, but, you know, it's all about taking risk. And this, this country allows each one of us to choose a course in life, something we want to do. There is no guarantee of success, but we have that option. And what I see developing now is the government stepping in to, to take that potential failure away. I don't like that. That's not right. So Richard Ekstrom was here one night. Richard took his tie off and hung it over this podium. He said, the, the economic pie is so big. On one side of the pie, from this part of the tie over, you have the government size. The government size has grown. So you have the private sector shrinking. And that's, that's a good picture. We've got to shrink the government. And what I've noticed being on city council is that the, it's clear to me that the local, state, and federal government, all these things are tied together. They're not isolated in compartments. So I've, I've been told, well, just stick to your district over in the city of Casey. Well, every vote I make, like Tom makes, affects, in his case, the whole state. Mine affects the whole city. So my actions have a wide-reaching impact. Also, I try to get a resolution passed, and I'll give Kenny Bingham credit, even though he disagreed with me on term limits. The, the state of South Carolina has a, the Constitution set so that you can't limit the terms of locally elected officials. So I wanted to change the Constitution to allow that, that option, the option of term limits to be imposed on school boards, county councils, and city councils. I lost by one vote, even getting the re resolution out. I know Alan Clemens uh, attempted that, and he lost on that, but I did. we are the second city in the state to have financial transparency or check register. So, and I could tell you a lot of other things I've worked on the Department of, the Department of Electric Genetics at Richland before they closed in the late 90s. I worked on the Human Genome Project. I worked at Scottsman Ice Machine, based out of Chicago, here at Fairfax, and out in Texas. So I've worked on a lot of different software systems and a lot of different uh, business systems. I've got a lot of technical background, uh, I, and I, I hate to say I'm not a politician, I'm not, because I, I can easily get people upset with me. And I will. <laughs> if I get elected, I, but I will promise you, everyone will have a fair opportunity, and I will encourage open discussion, <coughs> even things I disagree with. So, uh, any questions for us at now? Questions? So, vote Steve Isom, GOP chairman. I appreciate your vote. Thanks, Steve. Thanks, Thanks Steve. Thank you.